This is it. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. This is the final part of the Ultimate OBS Setup Guide. My name's Danny and I stream over on twitch.tv slash dannyvals. If this is your first time here, I definitely recommend checking out parts one and two because everything we do today builds on what we've already done in OBS. To wrap things up, we're going to finish off setting up our scenes, configure audio tracks and audio filters, and use some plugins to improve how we transition between scenes. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more tips and tutorials for streamers. It really is the best way to support this channel. All that being said and done, let's wrap this thing up. Now things get very interesting because we're going to create our broadcast scenes. So I'm going to close this, go over to add. I'm going to create our first broadcast scene starting. This is a scene that we can use to build a little anticipation before our stream starts. And once we've created it, just drag it up into the broadcast section. The first thing we want to do is add our overlay scene. So again, we're going to go to scene and we'll find our overlays. We're then going to lock it in place so that when we add other sources, we're not just dragging this all over the shop. For a starting scene, I always recommend having a countdown displayed so that people know they're not going to be sitting around waiting for ages and ages. To do that, we can go to add media source, call it timer, and then locate the file that we made ahead of time. We want to make sure that it doesn't loop and we close the file when inactive. Press OK and we can place this wherever we need. I'm also going to go ahead and add my chat box from streamlabs.com. Set it to 900 by 900, press OK, and then we can place it where we need it to be. Of course, I'm using a third party chat box, but there's nothing stopping you from just embedding the chat directly from Twitch, YouTube, Kick, Trovo, or whatever platform you're using. I put links to the relevant endpoints in the description. Your background should be interesting if possible, be it a looping video or something more creative. Here we're going to use another one of the plugins that we installed, the blur filter. Let's create a new scene called our webcam blurred and add our webcam scene as a source. Over on the scenes pane, we're going to right click it, hit filters, and we'll go to add blur. I'm going to call it what you like, and we're going to set the blur type to Gaussian and the size about the middle. Then we can go back to our starting scene, add our nested webcam blurred scene, and press OK. We then drag us to the bottom, drag overlay to the top, and then lock the scene in place. You can add any relevant sources to this scene if you like, such as your stream schedule, links to your socials, a logo, and even more just to fill out this space. Once you've got everything in place, the blur background just makes things a lot more interesting and engaging. Depending on the size of your channel, it's a good idea to go from a starting scene into a chatting scene, so you can hang out with your community for a bit. So we're going to set up that scene right now by going into the scenes pane, add, and then dash b dash just chatting. Once again, we'll add our overlay scene, but truth be told, I actually don't like having the supporter bar on every single scene, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, along with the sponsor overlay. Back on the chatting scene, I'm going to add my supporter bar scene manually, and lock it in place. I'm also going to add my Twitch chat once again, but this time we're going to do things a little differently. To keep things interesting, we're going to use one of the plugins that we installed earlier. Let me just add the chat box, and set it to 900 by 960. Now I just want to nudge it into place by pressing down on the keyboard a few times so it looks a bit more centralized. And then we can right click the source, go to filters, and under the effect filters, we're going to go to the add button, and we're going to apply a 3D effect. Now play around with each of the settings and see what works for you, but I'm going to go for a 96 degree field of view and a 5 degree rotation on the Y axis. This gives us this really cool tilt effect. So when I go to add scene and I add my webcam, once I drag that chat box above, it looks like I'm looking into the chat. For our Be Right Back scene, we're going to keep things largely the same as our just chatting scene, but we're going to add some content for our viewers to consume whilst we're away from the stream. So right click into the scenes pane, go to add, and I'm going to go B, Be Right Back. Once again, we're going to add our supporter bar and our overlays, and then we'll go ahead and add another version of our chat box with another set of dimensions. This time it's 640 by 640. We'll of course want to apply the same 3D effect to the chat box so we can go back to our just chatting scene, right click our chat box and go to copy filters. While we're here, we of course want to make sure that our overlays are on top and our support bar is just above the webcam. That's looking nice now. Back on our BRB scene, we can right click the new chat box and click paste filters. I'm also going to take my stream logo from the starting scene and add that just beneath the chat box as well. So I shall add an existing source for the unicorn logo, resize as necessary, and place it just below the chat box. Of course, if you don't have a logo yourself, you can always change the height of the chat box to fill out the space. 
What are we going to do with this dead area to the right though? That is where Words on Stream comes in. It's a Scrabble-esque anagram solving game that your chat can play whilst you're away. Head over to wos.gg and then either log in with Twitch or YouTube or use party mode. Once you've logged in, you can press this gear icon in the corner and then copy your link. I'd also recommend using the autopilot mode so you don't have to monitor the game while you're away. We can then go ahead and add a new browser source, call it WOS, set the URL, and we'll set the width and height to 1280 by 720. Again, to save some RAM, we're gonna shut down the source when not visible and press OK. We're gonna put this on the right-hand side of the scene, right-click to the WOS source, go to transform and center vertically. All you need to do now is add your background. This could be your gameplay or your webcam, blurred or otherwise. I'm gonna go ahead and add the blurred webcam. And then we'll order these scenes so they make sense. So overlays on top, webcam on the bottom. And there we have it. I'm gonna lock that in place. And then while we're here, I think it makes sense to set up a nice transition between the just chatting scene and the BRB scene. To do this, we're gonna go over to scene transitions and press this plus button here. You'll see there's now a move option. This move option is actually one of the plugins we installed. Click into it, call it move. We're gonna change just a few settings. Firstly, we wanna match if the source name contains the other source name. Then for appearing items, we want that to come in from center right. And for disappearing items, we wanna add a fade transition. Now this scene transition section here will apply this transition to every single scene in OBS. So going from just chatting to starting, to anything else will always have this swoosh effect and that may not be what you want. So to fix this, we're gonna go up to tools and we're gonna use another plugin that we installed called the transition table. Click into it and we wanna set a transition from the just chatting scene to the BRB scene and we want that to use the move transition. Set this to 1500 milliseconds and press set. We then want to set this the other way around as well. So go from BRB to just chatting and press set. Now, if we clear this out, you'll see that we have BRB to just chatting will be the move transition. Just chatting to BRB will also be the move transition. And then we press close. And we can set the default transition to be a fade that takes 500 milliseconds. So if we move to say our gameplay scene, it's a nice fade. Back to BRB, it's a nice fade. If we go to just chatting, things swoosh away and come back nicely. Now to make things look a little bit nicer when you're transitioning between scenes is to have this chat box resize. So the way we're gonna do that is by going into our starting scene and we're gonna rename this chat box here to chat box starting. And then on the just chatting scene, we're gonna rename this chat box to simply chat box. Then back in the BRB scene, chat box BRB. You now notice that when we move between these two scenes, that chat box resizes. This resize happens because in the move transition properties, we have match if the source name contains the other source name. So because here in our just chatting scene, the chat box is just called chat box, we go down to the BRB scene. And this is chat box dash BRB. Because chat box BRB contains the word chat box, the resize is done nicely. Onto our gameplay scene now. So we're gonna go into the scene section, press add and we'll call it B for broadcast scene, in game. Just drag this up here, and then we'll go ahead and add our overlays, lock that in place, and of course add our gameplay as well. We're also gonna add our webcam frame. So we're gonna go into a media source, call it webcam frame, and set it to this here, webcam four by three. We'll set it to loop and close the file when inactive. Then we can press OK. We'll then resize it to a size that makes sense. And then we'll center it vertically. Once you're happy, we're going to press the lock button and also just drag it below the overlays. Then we're going to go ahead and add our webcam scene. So plus scene webcam. That's me. That's very big. And we'll put the webcam scene beneath the webcam frame and we'll resize things to a size that makes sense. Once again, we can right click here, set preview scaling to canvas, and then we can scroll in as we need. So I'm gonna drag myself over here, click my face, and then we will hold alt and drag this in to 
for size that makes sense. Once you're happy with that, just lock it in place, then right click, preview scaling, scale to window. To keep things tidy, you might also want to make yourself a group so you can right click the sources pane, add group. I shall call this webcam group, because it's very inventive. Press enter, and then we can drag the webcam frame and the webcam into this group. And you'll see that even though these two here are padlocked, we can grab the entire scene and move everything around. So by grouping it, we can move both the frame and the webcam around very easily without having to select two items at once. Now, one bit of advice I do have for camera placement is to place it on the side where you'll be looking when you're gaming. What I mean by this is if you're looking on your left monitor when you're gaming, put your webcam on the left. If you're looking on the right, put it on the right. The reason I say this is because if you are sat gaming and you're holding a controller and you're looking off to the right, but your webcam is on the left, it looks like you're looking out of the frame. So try to look into the content wherever you can. It's also a good idea to put the camera in the center rather than the top or bottom, just because when people are browsing for streams to watch, you don't want little overlays obscuring your face. On to the ending scene now, and there are no hard and fast rules, but what we're gonna do is add our scene and put in a few different elements. As always, of course, we're gonna go ahead and add our nested scenes showing our overlays. And we're also gonna show our support bar as well. Flip them around and lock them both in place. It's also a really good idea to have your socials and your schedule on here just so people know when they can catch you again. I've actually gone ahead and made an image ahead of time. So I'll go to add image, call it ending card, and then browse for the image that I need. Once again, we're gonna unload the image when we're not showing it and then press okay. We can then move the ending card to the bottom and lock it in place. For a bit of branding, I'm gonna put in my stream logo once again. So I'm gonna to go to the BRB scene, get my unicorn logo, right click it and press copy. Then back in the ending scene, I will right click and paste a reference to this source. I can then move it where I need to and resize it without affecting what is already on the BRB scene. We'll drag the unicorn logo down in the list of sources. And I'd like to add my chat box one last time. We're gonna set the dimensions to 900 by 450. And then we'll place this just down here. I'm then gonna add a second webcam frame. But this time it's a 16 by nine version. I'll use a local file, set it to loop. Don't show nothing when playback ends and close file when inactive and press OK. I'm then gonna place this above our chat box. Again, if you need to, you can right click, go to preview scaling and set it to canvas and zoom in and out as needed just to get that perfect placement. Once you've got your webcam frame positioned, we can then go and add our webcam itself. Hello. And then we can resize me into the relevant place. So I'll put myself beneath the webcam frame and go down here resize here and that is a pretty tidy ending scene now when it comes to actually ordering our scenes what i try to do is i have the broadcast scenes in the order that i'll actually use them and the reference scenes they should generally be alphabetical just to keep things organized so we're going to go to our overlays and just move that above our supporter bar and everything else looks good what we might also want to do is create a new scene which is a pre-broadcast scene and we can move this to the very very top this is for any scenes that you might want to use before you go live. So I'm actually going to create a checklist scene and then drag it up into the pre-broadcast section. Here, I'm just going to set up a few text sources. So I'll say checklist item one, set a font, and here in the text field, I'm just going to call it checklist item. We can then repeat this by right-clicking the source, pressing copy, right-clicking again, and pressing paste duplicate. We can then drag to select all of them, right click, transform, center to screen. What I like to do is to rename these into things that I want to do before I hit the go live button. You can of course set these to whatever you want, but I like to have these checklist items and then turn them off as I do them. So that before I go live, I know that I've got things to do and they're not gonna get forgotten. The very last thing we're gonna do is set up our audio. We've added a lot of sources to our scenes and things can get in a bit of a mess, so let's fix that. Back in the first video, we set up three separate audio channels. One for the stream mix, one for mic only, and one for no mic. In order to set this up, we need to make sure the audio mixer is sending to the right outputs. So we can right-click any of these sources and go to Advanced Audio Properties. Uncheck the Active Sources Only button, and then you'll see all the audio sources that are available in OBS. 
Now expand this, so you can see everything. And then over here on the right are the tracks. This is essential. Because the second channel is microphone only, we need to turn off every single audio source on track two besides the microphone. Equally, because track three is the no microphone track, we need to make sure our microphone is not recording on that track. Tracks four, five, and six are unused, so you can leave these checked. It's also worth noting that here, you can set a sync offset if you need to. Because I use a DSLR as my webcam, I have to put it through a capture card in order for OBS to see it. Doing this introduces a bit of a delay, so I have to offset my microphone accordingly. For me personally, 100 milliseconds seems to be about right, but everyone's equipment is different. So do some recording, do some testing, and see if you need to add a sync offset. The very last thing we'll do is make sure our microphone is always louder than our gameplay. To do that, we use some filters. On your microphone audio source, you can click into these dots here, go to filters, I'm gonna press add limiter. I find the default settings seem to work quite well, but of course, have a record, have an experiment, and see what works for you. Now here we have a minus six decibels threshold, and we're gonna make sure that our gameplay is always quieter. So go into our desktop audio, go to filters, and add yourself another limiter. We just need to make sure that this is a lower number than our microphone. By using sensible thresholds on your limiters, you're gonna ensure that your gameplay is never drowning out your voice. So even in the heat of battle, explosions everywhere, zombies closing in, you'll know that your microphone will be nice and clear. And that's about it for this part of the Ultimate OBS Setup Guide. We have covered a lot of ground, so be sure to bookmark this video so you can come back in the future for a refresher if you need it. Do let me know if any of these tips have been useful to you, and if you're a more seasoned streamer, feel free to leave a comment with your own OBS tips. I love hearing how people use OBS, just gonna wanna squeeze every last little drop of functionality from it. If you wanna watch another video, right there. I've been Danny, I'll catch you on the next one.